Hi, I'm building a SaaS product in .NET and I'm documenting the whole journey here on YouTube. Now, I want to mention that this project actually is going to be for real. Probably it will be an open source or commercial available and has been started already, but I have decided to go and create some video content in order to show you how you can avoid technical debt and how you can start a project simple without all the buzzwords like microservices and all the technical stuff that uh, the developers, they tend to use it, but they forgot the basic knowledge. So first we're going to see why I'm going to create what we are building. We're going to see the architecture diagram, the architecture decision, and we go a bit in the code that it exists at the moment of the recording. So why I'm building? Because I have decided to start simple, to start a project simple, but actually evolve in a more complex one. And that's the reason I'm using the enterprise patterns, DDD and or testing the BDD, because this one allows us to scale code and the group by features. And I'm going to emphasize a lot on the testing. There's going to be a lot of testing like unit uh, integration tests and also component, which I have seen it's something not very well documented. And this will be a production ready code. Again, this application is going to be for real. I'm going to do a lot of error handling, how to handle uncertainty, and especially because I'm not a domain expert indeed, and I do not have a domain expert either. And you're going to see me how I'm building that. So this is going to be a tech channel. I'm going to show the tech stack. It's going to be .NET 8, Postgres and Redis and maybe RabbitMQ. At the moment, there is no such a thing. And it's going to be a monolith. Yes, I know the boring one, no modular monolith either. And the reason for that is because there are no performance metrics and no multiple teams. And you're going to see me in the architecture consideration why I have decided to go with this one. But we'll use DDD and for the testing pyramid, we actually want to respect all of that. For client, we're going to use Blazor, WebAssembly, and for deploy, we have the code in GitHub uh, for classical CI CD pipelines. St staging, we're going to have a Linux self hosted, and production, it will be a cloud one, probably Asia. So, what we are building, if you're in European Union, then all the countries that are inside the European Union, all the public institution and the governments, in order to make the acquisition, they have to make it publicly. And in Romania, it's called SAP, let's call it. And through this website, all the government requests, they are publicly available here. So the private entities like companies, they are able to supply the demand, but everything is done here, at least in the theoretical order. So we're going to scrape this website to get some information from them. We're going to get the public acquisition. We're going to allow the user to set up some interest and we will add some notifications when the acquisition will match the user interest. And the key feature is going to be the report, which I'm going to discuss later on. So let's first to see the architecture diagram. So our user is able to access our SaaS system through a website, a browser. And this system, it's actually is going to interact with two one It's going to be the external, the acquisition platform and external system that is responsible for sending emails. Now, if you go to actually our um, container, we see that inside our system, we do have the front end. This one kind of be probably a load balancer like Nginx. And we have two applications, the web API, which is responsible to serve a request to the front end and the jobs. The Web API is mainly doing read operations and a couple of writes which are responsible to the user, but most of the operations here are done are reads, and actually that's very important. The jobs on the other way around is doing most of the writes. Here has done all the parsing from external, they are sent emails, and these jobs interact with a couple of cache layer. We do have Redis and with the database itself, which is a Postgres. Now, if you do attention, I've actually made a decision here drastically because most of the operation here are done reads and here most of them are done writes. And actually this is going to help us to optimize a lot the performance queries. So for the architecture considerations, we're going to consider the functional one, how to get requirements with a high uncertainty. There is no domain expert and actually I'm not a domain expert for the auctions and I know how this procurement it's working in the real world. We're going to focus on non-functional requirements. We build a product scale ready, reliable, and we target low maintenance. For the architecture patterns, I'm going to show you how to use effectively, how to don't repeat yourself, how to use keys effectively. And these are just of the examples that I'm going to underline and a couple of underrated patterns which I have not seen too often are the visitor and the chain of responsibility. For scalability, we're going to target Veltic already, so I'm not going to target anything scalable. 
I'm underlining here the query optimization. I'm not talking about optimizing the database queries itself, but mostly related to the application itself. So I'm not talking about premature optimization, nothing like that. For the security, we're gonna go now with the basic. And again, I'm gonna emphasize a lot of testing, deployment we have automated on-premise and cloud. The monitoring and login, we're gonna validate our business assumptions because we're gonna have a lot because there is no domain expert. And even if there is a domain expert in enterprises, in companies, sometimes I have heard a lot of that should not happen. Now, should, it's very different from will not happen. So I'm gonna use the logging to monitor our assumption and see if they are true or false. And I'm gonna put the decision to be into the code. So all the knowledge will be at the end in the code itself and for monitoring as well. So what will not consider it's anything related to data recovery, data synchronization, replication, no microservices, there will be no outbox pattern, event driven, maybe uh, no compliance, no encryption, no replication. So we're gonna focus to build a monolith application that will sell our user, but I'm targeting 1 million requests. So I'm targeting actually a high number of requests and I'm allowing to scale vertical later on. Event driven, maybe we're gonna use it and probably we're gonna use it because at a certain point, you really have to do some modification in the monolith in order to allow to scale. So let's have a look to the code. Okay, so looking at the code, we do have our solution. There are 18 projects here at the moment. And the, most of the application content is here in this folder, which is browse content. And we have the, I'm gonna start with the domain layer. So in the domain layer, there are a lot, uh, the knowledge that I was talking about is related to companies, contracts, suppliers, and so on. Then we do have the application and we do respect the clean architecture. So everything is related to features. We do have all the features here uh, that are inclusive, the web jobs and actually the requests. So both of the queries, actually both of the applications, they reference this assembly. We do have a couple of communication. Uh, this is actually more related to infrastructure. I know I'm violating a, a bit of the concern. I'm doing that on purpose. And I'm violating again because I do have uh, the storage. So the entity framework, it is itself added in the application layer, which indeed it violates the, um, because that should happen in the infrastructure as well. I'm doing that on purpose because uh, sometimes making the decision, uh, they make sense at the moment of the project, maybe in the POC context and so on. But later on, when you grow, you start doing refactoring and that's, that's actually important. And that's a natural uh, phase of the project. And related to testing, we do have around 200 tests, which are integration and unit tests. Uh, we have some integration events. That was an attempt to do a monolith, a modular monolith, but I have just given up because that actually adds complexity when you start the project. And the, the users, it's an attempt to create a modular monolith, which currently it's not used at all. And we have the web job, which is mostly the infrastructure part where um, there's no business logic here, just to wrapping things up to make the disassembly running. All the code here it is, so all the web jobs. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna show you actually how it looks like right now if you do start the web job because that's the project we're gonna start to work on. This is most of the part where the parsing is made. So we made, we validate all the business decisions. And this is the web job project with all the jobs which are registered at the moment. This is done most of the scraping and the validating our assumption. That's pretty much all. I'm gonna show you what are the pain points when we started the project, the POC phase and so on. But let me show you what's your difficult part when you start a project and um, which part would you like to elaborate more? Just browsing the code, just looking, having a high overview. Drop me a comment uh, and that's the idea for the next video. That's pretty much it. I'm Daniel and until the next time, see you soon. Bye.